Let's go ahead, guys, and start doing the load calculation for the commercial building. You have an Excel sheet of the file in front of you. Um, when we do load calculation, Phil, my friend, for a commercial building, there are separate types of loads that we put in a commercial building. Notor notoriously famous one of them, guys, is the receptacle load, major load, receptacle load. The second major load that we do is lighting load. That's a major type of load. And the third major type of load, they call them chunk of loads, is going to be the mechanical equipment, the heating and the cooling and the ventilation. So what I want to do, guys, is I want to talk, take, walk you through the sheet that you, you should have a PDF file about. Um, you can design your, PD, your sheet any way, shape, or form. This is one format of designing the sheet. But what I'm hoping, what I'm hoping to get out of it is to, um, to walk you through step by step how to do a load calculation with Excel. Then I do have an example here that we're going to do it by hand. That will cover chapter, um, chapter 11, as a matter of fact, all load calculation. So it's all about load calculation for a commercial. <clears throat> so the first big chunk of, of load that you guys are going to be dealing with, as you can see over here, is the receptacle load. So for receptacle loads, I want you guys to look at the, I don't know if you can see this here, 220.14i. Um, this is receptacle loads. The code allow for every receptacle in a commercial building, you're allocating 180 volt amp. Commercial, we're not talking residential here. For every receptacle in a commercial building, you're allocating 180 volt amp, okay? So if you have, the way this works, if you have a single, or a duplex receptacle, you allocate 180 volt amp for it. If you have a quad, you allocate 90 volt amp for every single receptacle on the quad. So long story short, it end up being 180 for every uh, quad, for every quad, okay? So this is the first, the first and the most important thing guys I wanna look at, which is the, um, Allocating load for receptacles in a commercial building, 180 volt amp for every receptacle. Cool? Everybody's okay with that? And the second thing is, um, this is I. I'm going to go directly to the code, and um, and I, if you guys have your code open, you can go ahead and highlight this, because I think it's important. And if your friend Chad thinks it's important, then it's important, right? Uh, unless Chris says otherwise. Uh, <laughs> 210.14, this is the article, this is the load calculation. Everything you need to know about load calculation for um, brand circuits, feeders, and services, it's going to be in Article 220, as we all know, when we did the residential. We're going to spend some good time, actually, on other loads here, in this particular one, other loads. Um, so if you guys... Um, um, okay, analyze, mark, okay. So we're going to spend some good time in other loads in this area here. Oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, edit, undo. Okay, comments, highlighter. Here's what I'm looking for. So if you guys go with me with your with your NEC code book to 220.14. Uh, 14. Moving in 220.14, the first thing I want to highlight, and I'm highlighting certain things, guys. I want to highlight 14i. So let's go all the way into highlighting uh, 14i. Uh, 14i is right here. If you guys look, these are the ones that you, you have in your, in your book. 14i, it says, except as 220.14j, receptacle outlet shall be assigned 180 volt amp, and if they are quad, 90, 90 uh, volt amps. Okay, so this I'm following with step number one, and I'm referring you guys to the NEC code book. Where does it say that every receptacle in a commercial building you have to assign 180 volt amp for it, right? Cool, this is on that will be for step number one. Any question, guys, about this one for every receptacle commercial building, count them up, multiply it by 180. Where would you find this one? That will be from uh 220.14i. Any question, guys, about 220.14i? 220.14i. If you can go ahead and highlight, if I were you, I will go, this is in page uh, 62, I'll go there and highlight this one, since you guys are going to be um, geeks like your uh, friend Chad, and you're going to read these inside out. Okay, cool, for step number one, 180, everybody knows where the 90 degree, the 90 volt amp, as well as the 180 volt amp came to be, 
bold down, um, right in here, and right in here. Cool. Okay, so that's the first step. That's my first step of, of the calculation. So this is where these um, 100, 180 and 90. So if we have a quad, Chris, you count every one single receptacle on the quad, multiply it by 90. If you have a, a duplex or a single yoke receptacle, 180. Questions about the step number one? How do you do this in CAD, in, in Excel, piece of cake? You count, these are 219 is old. Now these are, this is an example. This is not your project. This is an example. For you guys, you're gonna count them after you're done, multiply them by 180. If you have a quad, you, ta you, you take your quad and you multiply it by, by 90. So what you get here, can you guys see the math at the top here? The math at the top is taking these two cells and you can see uh, 219 multiplied by 180. And right underneath them, it's taking, um, it, right underneath them, it's taking uh, the one quad and multiplying by 90. And where did the 90 and 180 came to be? From one, from 214, dot uh from 220.49 questions questions about this step in the project are we is there some area that tells us where to put these outlets or is it garbage absolutely garbage? there is a whole step by step where to put the outlets okay. minimum so that's why we're using hard counts rather than square footage uh we don't use square footage because the code doesn't allow you to use square footage square footage is only for we're coming to square footage in commercial building, unlike residential. That's a switch that you guys have to do. Square footage of a building, unlike residential, where it covers receptacles as well as light. In commercial building, it only covers light. Cool? That's very major change between the commercial and the... Uh, um, okay, look at K. We're coming, we're coming to K. Okay. We're coming, just hold your horses with me. We're coming to K. We're coming to K in a second. Okay, any question, guys, about number one? I just don't want to jump to K before I... There is some... You're right. There's some little rule there. Any question, guys, about step number one? Cool? Let's go to number two. Number two, guys, if you if you come over here... Oops. Let's go down, down all the way. Um, you're going to go to multi-outlet assembly, 220.14H, multi-outlet assembly. Multi-outlet assembly, if you read what it tells you here, it says if you have a multi-outlet assembly for every five feet, you assign 180 volt amp. <clears throat> um, 100 volt, volt amp, if it's non-simultaneous, if it's simultaneously used, then you assign um, 180 amp for every one foot of it. One section, one foot, you assign 180 volt amp for it. 180 volt amp. Um, and this is, this should be a VA, yeah, volt amp, and this should be a volt amp, not, not amp, I hope so, volt amp. Okay, any question guys about this one? So let's go directly, I'm going to relate it to the code. So here's what we did, just to give you an idea what they did in the sheet. I have a 50 feet, these are feet, 50 feet of uh, multi-out assembly that's non simultaneously used. It's not used at the same time. I assigned the five section, and the other one is one section. So what, what they did, if you did the math, this is just an example. Here's, here's the math in there. Oops, uh, where am I here? The math in there is you take the 180, way at the top, you take the, the 50 multiplied by 180, divided by 5. Why divide by 5? Because for every 5, I, ha I have 180 volt amp. Questions about that? The one underneath there. The one underneath is going to be for um, simultaneously used. If it's simultaneously used, you take the number of feet, multiply by the number of uh, 180 volt amp, divide by one, obviously. That will leave it the same thing. Any question, guys, about that? This is the sheet that you're looking at in the front of you. That's how the sheet is done. If you guys want to write the math on it, if you have a hard copy, to help you know what we're doing. Cool? And then... Everybody, any question about how the math is in that? So I'm going to go take you, since we refer you directly into 220.14H, because, because we follow the code. So we're going to go directly into, into um, H. Here's H. Here's the one that we multi-out assembly. It's not, it didn't come from Chad Kearney's house and basement. 
Here's H, and if you guys don't believe, Chad, here's the 5. For every 5, 180. And for every 1, 180. And let's highlight also the simultaneous so we know what we're talking about. Here's this one for simultaneous, and this one for unlikely, the word unlikely and simultaneous, if that makes sense. Okay? So this is where it came directly from the code. If I were you, we guys... Uh, Ashley, you can do anything you you can see anything you want. If you justify it by the code, you're good to go, right? And that's why I like to highlight these article directly in the code. Cool? And you're going to hear Chad going through the code one time, guys, for highlighting these. So if I wear you, I'll highlight them. We know where they are. We know what they're, where these information coming from simultaneously and non-simultaneously. Any question? Any question? Where's Allah Deeb and his Jesus today? Keep sending us about Jesus, don't show up. Oops, did I say that? <laughs> Oops. Allah Deeb, we just missed you, man. <laughs> Speaking of the devil. Send all these messages about Jesus and they don't show up to class. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We just mentioned him. <laughs> Sorry, Aldi, but this is recorded too. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Speak of the devil, huh? <laughs> okay, cold outside? A little bit. A little bit. All right, Aldi, follow up with us, my friend. You are the best after my grandma, though. All right. <laughs> this is the, the simultaneously and non simultaneously. Any question? I'm going to go, guys, with the steps. I'm just gonna go put some color here, fill on it, just to, to uh, I like the color green because uh, it's the color green. So these are the two steps that we did so far, one and two. Any question guys about these two steps? And I know Chris is gonna go there and make a beautiful Excel sheet from it, that's awesome. My, what I'm asking you guys to have, to have something meaningful, meaningful like this with some math in it. When they say meaningful, meaning you have to write what the code says, a little bit, and where the reference that you're referring to. Cool? Yes, sir. When you say it's in front of us, Chad, is it in the instructor folder? Yes, yes. Yep, it's in the instructor folder. Absolutely. Yep, instructor folder. Okay, so uh, these are the two the two steps that we did, step one and step two. And then right here, what, the, what we did um, is we added them, right? This step here, we added the receptacles the receptacles and the multi-outlet assembly load. Add them, right? Can you guys see how we added this cell and this, the two totals, which is step one and two? Does that make sense? Added them? Okay. So now we, we know what the receptacle load is going to be. Then, then, uh, this is where the, the it becomes really interesting. Um, uh, receptacle load for non-dwelling, now, you then you're going to go apply a demand factor from table 220 to 44. Here's what the code says, guys. You add all these receptacles and multi-out assembly, and you apply a demand factor for them. The first 10, the first 10 percent. Look at this one. I will go. Let's go to the table direct. Well, well let's do this one first. The, you take the you take the receptacle load that you came up with, which is uh, in this case 4,800, like close to 49 kVA. Can you guys see that one? That's the number here. You take it and the first thing kVA, leave them alone. They're sacred cow, don't touch them. Anything higher than 10, this is only commercial, not residential, shove it off by 50%. Okay, so here you go. You take the first 10, leave them alone. That will give you a 10. Anything higher than 10, look at the math here. The math here is, and you can do any math you want, guys, is taking this number, if it's higher than 10, F, the F statement here, if this number is higher than 10, take 10 out of it and multiply, um, uh, subtract 10, subtract 10 out of it, like we said. If it's higher than 10, subtract 10 out of it, and then you're gonna multiply it by 0.5 to go to get the answer. You don't want to have an F statement like this if you want to in Excel. You can if you want to, but I'm happy with taking this cell, which is the 48.7K, subtracting from it 10, and, and put the number right here, and then multiply it by 0.5. So they're using an F statement. Again, 
minimum, minimum, use cell, subtract 10, and drop that number right in there. Everybody can see the cell that they're using here? As long as over 10, you're good. Yes, as long as over, over 10, you're good. Well, if it's under 10, then you see a negative number, then hopefully that will trigger a, a how you're going to have a, a negative 20. Now, you are, you're getting into Einstein theory now, if you're going to have negative energy and, and, uh, and all this good stuff. Okay, so everybody knows where this number came from, the first 10 at 100%. The remainder, which is um, that number here, minus 10, cut it by half, and that will get you 19.3, and then add the two together. Then this is the, your mistake that they used to do all the time. You, you have to add the 10 to the half, the, the half that you cut. Any question about this? That's called derating for receptacle. What's the idea behind it? The idea behind it, it's highly unlikely that all these receptacles in the commercial building will be running simultaneously. Cool. Any question guys about this? Highly unlikely that these will be running simultaneously. Now, <clears throat> I want to take you guys to the code to 220.44. So you know that Chad did not brought this one from his basement. 220.44. 220.44. Let's go all the way to 220.54. Where's 220? Here you go. I want you guys to go to 220.44 and highlight it. This is where you apply the demand factor, and I want you to highlight if it's 10, leave it alone, sacred cow or goat, in Chad's cases. And the remainder, anything higher than 10, what do you need to do with it? Multiply by 50. Questions? Any question, guys, about this? If I were you, I'll have my code open and highlight these stuff. Any question? As we move on, guys, this will become second nature for you in terms of a commercial building. This table is very important, very important when it comes to the rating receptacle for commercial building. Any question? Any question? Okay. Your, William, my friend, any questions? Any? Yes, sir. In your experience engineering, in the practical sense, how often do you do you know the receptacle when you're figuring out the service? Day one. You so can know it literally day one within within ten within plus or minus I would say five to five percent. And how do you get these numbers? Because of experience. Uh, how how many receptacles you need in the area? That's what you're asking, right? right? Yeah. Because like if you see the narrative that we have right now. Every commercial building that you see is going to have some type of a narrative, plus or minus five to ten percent. Uh, uh, like if you, for example, if you look at the narrative, we see offices. On every wall, you can have receptacle in the office. Quads, you can have a quad in every uh, cubicle. All these are typical in, in an office building. So if you are familiar with this type of business, you can. I, I bet you can get close to five five percent plus or minus. So of the actual computation based on square footage or based on no based experience? on experience because the code doesn't tell you the code doesn't tell you where you need receptacles oh, yeah. oh, okay so i'm i'm uh, ryan construction mm -hmm. you know, i'm going to put up a uh, 40 by 40 square foot office building and uh, i build it out to whatever i can trick in the least experience okay so i get the project started i can't wait till i lease everything out to find out what the walls are going to be like and what everything else is going to be like in order to start building. So, so what, what would you do? I would, there's what, I would count, yeah. This is not based on square yeah. footage. Not square, square footage. footage. I guess you can do square footage. You can find a formula for square footage. I'm sure if you keep track, you can add them and find a formula for square footage. But I go by walls and by cubicles. By offices, but you don't know that. But all you know is, is the square foot. Yeah, yeah. And then at some I guess you you, you know what from a, uh, you know what from previous experience, all the calculation that we're doing here, as and I don't want to diverge too much. All the calculation that we're doing right here is sizing a, a receptacle panel. That's what we're doing, and a service. A lot of in, us engineers, guys, we can. You give me the square foot of the building, I can almost tell you what the service is going to be from previous experience, and that's what the big picture is. They're looking at the service, so they do. Okay, uh, if I can pull you guys together, so this is the first one. <clears throat> um, 
Okay, so we added the ten percent. Now I want you guys to go to. If I can't have your attention, guys, please. I want you to go to um, if it's an office building or a bank only. If it's an office building or a bank only, you do one more step. Only if it's an office building or a bank. That's where um, Chris came to be, and he he mentioned if it's an office building or a bank, you have to do uh, step number twenty dot fourteen k, which one volt amp for every square foot of the building for every square foot of the building and so you take the square foot of an office building and multiply it by one volt amp and that will be allocated volt amps for the receptacles then don't stop there though <clears throat> excuse me then you don't stop there then you compare the two remember there are two calculations for the receptacles now there's one calculation for the number of receptacles multiplied by 180 okay and there's calculation if it's an office one volt amp times uh, the square foot and you choose after you derate the receptacles you look at the two numbers and you choose which number do you think we're going to choose the largest of the two only for office and banks okay so let's look at this what they did here what we did um we have 220.14k <clears throat> i have um one volt amp from the code multiplied by 10k and that will meet that will give me a 10k here right that will be uh a 29 uh, that will give me a 10 a 10k and then <clears throat> then chris this is the single most important thing you're going to do here <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> can you guys see <clears throat> what i did here we did the cap we did the derating we did the derating here can you guys see the derating and then we did the one and we multiply it by the square feet of a building, we came up with this number. Then these two numbers, we have to find the largest. We're going to find the largest of the two numbers. The largest, the largest of the two numbers, which is the 10 or the 29.390 kVA. So Ashley, which is bigger, 10,000 or 29,000? Anybody can help Ashley here? <laughs> 29,000. So because 29,000 is bigger, so we put the, for the for the receptacle load, my total would be the 29,000. Any question? Any question about that, guys? So you do. Did you guys? But did you see the point? Is first you do the calculation. You you have to do it though. You must do it, Jackson. You can't compare this number here. You cannot compare it with this number here. You have to compare it with the derated number right in here. You're going to compare it with the derating number. This number with, uh, where's my 10? With this number, these two, largest, and then what's the largest of the two? <coughs> well, the 29, Chad, duh. And off it goes. Questions? Jackson? No, I guess. Answer it. The largest of the two. Can you write yourself only for banks and offices? Now, here's where Chris comes to be. Well, Chad, I'm starting this office building, and I really have no idea where to put the receptacles. And I need an estimate for the building, an estimate for the building. I don't have receptacles. So what should I do? If you don't have a, if you don't have a, you haven't started laying out your receptacles, you don't have a narrative like you guys do. So you don't have this number. So this number does not exist yet. So what do you, which number do you think first we're going to be using? The 10, the one times one one where's where's the by the way where's the ten thousand came to be here where's that ten thousand here where is one 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 here let's work with the building that we have cool if i get you to understand this one guys you're good to go so you compare the two choose the largest in my case the largest was the actual receptacles in the building chris does it make sense now okay now having said that uh no i don't want let me close that one having said that let's go back to the to the code and say highlight this one because i want you really to highlight it so let's go back to 220.14k right uh chris there you go i want you guys to highlight this would you if you don't mind it says for banks and offices you choose the following uh the building the larger i'm going to highlight the word larger and I'm going to highlight the, this step, which you guys know, 14i, that's the 180 volt 
multiplied by the number of receptacle or a one volt amp or a one volt amp unless you're doing meters and you use 11. Okay, so it tells you either this by this step or by one volt amp, whichever is larger, the larger. Can you highlight this one, guys, for me? This is what the step K tells you. Any question? Does that make sense, though? I want to make sure it makes sense, though. Is there any explanation regarding the first commercial in other words, the strip that's considered a possible building for this exercise? Interesting. There'd be several different Yeah, banks, we know what a bank is. An office building is an, a building that mainly used for offices. Now, they don't go by building it. You know what? I don't like to do it this way, but the code goes by occupancy. So, for example, talk this Dunwoody. This could be this area that we're in. It's a school, right? So you allow, you apply the school rules to it. The hallways is a hallway. You apply the hallway rule in it. So you have a building, for example. Uh, you apply the commercial building that we have. The office area, you apply the office rules to it. But how about the support area, like the mechanical room, the bathrooms, the hallways? You apply different rules to them. I don't like to split here. Here's how I do it as an engineer. If the majority of the building, 80% of the building most of the time is used as an office, you apply the office rules for it. So. Well, there are two different, like you said, space by space. Or yeah, the code allows you to go space by space, but I mean, really, you're going to see it right now for lighting, for example. Do you want to go find the hallway and assign a volt amp for it, for the hallway, and then go to the room and assign a volt amp for the room? And I know what you're thinking, that you're thinking of energy code. Energy code is diff is is you, it's good for you to go to space by space for energy code because it gives you a better. Uh, better performance space by space but we're not talking about energy here we're just talking here in that particular we're talking about sizing the equipment but the challenge that we're having a hit to go there because we're becoming more green huggy feely like chad and green the whole design is becoming green the space by space is becoming more attractive because it gives you a smaller equipment okay any question guys about this rule so you choose the largest cool yep Absolutely. Um, any other outlet that you don't know about? Any other outlet? L, we didn't use L. Outlet not covered by A through K. What do you do with them? You assign 180 volt amp for each one of these outlets. Okay, so that's for the receptacles. That's for my receptacles. Any question, guys, about this? Any questions? So everybody knows why we came up with. Um, the green right here. Skip. Skip, buddy. Okay, here you go. Everybody knows where we came up with with the uh, 29 here. We compared the two numbers, the 10 and the 48, and we we picked. I mean the 10, um, the 10 underneath it, and the 29, and we came up with 29. 29 right here. This 29. Any question about this? Okay, so I'm going to go to the receptacle then and seal that. I'm going to seal this step and seal this step if you guys would me. I'm going to seal these just to make sure that we did them. And we did the unknown receptacle. Okay, now the second thing that you need to do for the building that we have, Ashley, we have the building that we have. They want us to... They want us to size for an expansion, future expansion, 5,000 square foot, right? That's future expansion. If I ask you for the future expansion, how many receptacles am I going to have in the future expansion? I don't know yet. We don't have any criteria, any narrative for it. <clears throat> this is where, Chris, this is where you use the one volt amp for future expansion only. So then what we did, <clears throat> step number four, are you guys with me? Step number four. Okay, come over here. Step number four. Um, we took the um, one volt amp here, and we multiply the one volt amp. As you can see, we multiply the one volt amp by five. What's where did the five came to be? Where did the five came to be? 5, the five thousand square foot future expansion and. 
we added them right in here. We added them right in here. Right in here. Okay. Okay, now I can I can use it. Okay. So we added them right here. So I want you I want you guys to look at these two numbers, this one and this one. These are the 5k and the 29 are your total <coughs> excuse me, your total load for the receptacles. Now, now I'm sure William is saying, Chad, this is one volt ampere square foot. But what happened to the 180 times the number of receptacles? Well, these are future. I have no idea how many receptacles are going to be there. Okay? Cool? Before I leave this step, I want to make sure everybody knows this and this. These are going to be added for receptacle, receptacle load. This is my total receptacle load. Done. The future as well as the this number after I compare it to two, after I compare it between the 180 volt amp and the one volt amp. Any question guys about this? Well, Jackson? From well, a practical standpoint, the, the load uh, based on the count comes up to three times more than the future. Does that make sense to you? So you design a building, killing something, whatever that is, yep. enough stuff to, to say I need 30 k Yep. yep. So now I'm going to add a, a future expansion and, and plan for it being the third a third of that one, yeah. So I, I, it's like a, you put one third in this case, yeah, 35, that will be one sixth actually. And no, if you add it together, so that will be 55. Third is, is much. Yeah. yeah. This is not a third though. Okay, 8 to 10,000 on the general rule. Here's a 30 plus 5 equals 35. You take a 5 divided by 35. Right? One over seven. So you have you added a seventh on the we're looking at on the existing. Okay, we're looking at twenty nine thousand three hundred and ninety. Okay. Versus ten thousand. Okay. Okay. If I do that math, I come up with a third. Okay. If I divide ten thousand to twenty nine okay. three hundred and ninety is approximately the third. Okay. Okay. That's where I'm coming. Okay. Yes, sir. It's kind of weird. Yeah. This I don't know where the the 5,000 here is future expansion. Future expansion. Future, no, that's in the in the narrative that I gave you guys. Can you grab the narrative with you when we do that? The narrative that we walked you guys through. In the narrative of this project, if you guys look at page, if you look at page six circled, 1.1 item B, it says 10,000 square foot with a future expansion of 5,000. Okay. okay, cool. No problem. Okay, any question guys about the receptacles? Later on, later on, Ashley, we're gonna go come back. What is that one? Chat. Okay. Later on, we're gonna come back, guys, and size the receptacle panel based on that one. Okay, I'm gonna go. So um any questions so far? Any question about the receptacle load? Any question about the receptacle load? Okay, now let's go to the lighting load, general lighting load. If you guys look at general lighting load, which is number five, now we we seal the receptacle, general lighting 220.12. Let's go directly into 220.12. 220.12. Okay, minimize that one. Um, NEC code book and highlight this one, please. 220.12. We're going the wrong way here. There you go. 220.42. Where is my 220.12? There you go. 220.12. You guys are familiar with this one from the commercial building. Um, from the residential building that we did. If you have an office, Chris, if you have an office, here's where the two and a half, this is, it says general lighting load by occupancy. General lighting load by occupancy. It gives you multiple occupancies or part of, of, of an occupancy. It could be a whole building or part of the building. So in this case, I have an office building <clears throat> and my occupancy per square foot, not square meter, um, is a 3.5. Uh, three and a half. 
free now. Any question, guys? Where the three and a half came to be? Please highlight that one. So we came, then we go back into. Um, okay, let's go. Um, here's my. Now I have two things here. I have my five point three point five times the ten thousand square foot of the building. Give me thirty five. And I also have another three point five times five. Anybody knows where the second five k came to be? That's the future expansion. Give me seventeen point five. And then, so the total I have to add for lighting, 35K and 17.5K. Some for day one and the others for the future. Where do these came from? From the table 220.42. Any question about the lighting? Any question about the lighting? So what's my lighting load? My lighting load, my friends, is going to be directly 35K and 17.5 feet any question about that okay the second thing is the code allow you to do the rating um so i get my lighting i sealed my lighting let's go directly into the rating here the code allows you to guys to go 220.42 derating you can derate the lighting load cool let's see if we can based on the occupancy though Let's go see if we can I derate the lighting loads based on an office occupancy. I don't know. So let's go and see back to Mr. Code. And uh, what was it? 220.42. Let's go to 220.42. Please highlight 220.42, guys. You used it for residential. And I know, Nick, my friend, you did it when we did the dwelling right in here. You guys did the dwelling. Now, is this building a dwelling building or part of it is dwelling? No unless you're going to be sleeping in your office. Uh, is this hospital? No. Is this hotels and motels or apartment houses and all this good stuff? No. Is it a warehouse? No. So wh where am I going to go then? Others. All others. What's all others? What's the rating for all others? 100%. What does that mean? Don't even think about it. Leave it alone. Don't even think about it. Cool? Any questions about this one? So you don't do it. That's why this section here is as an orange. Um, what color is this one? This uh, yellow, orange. Color, color one. Uh, <laughs> in, in yellow, because it's not applicable to this application. But had you been doing other type of building, it could be applicable. Cool? Yes, sir. Jackson? Uh, with the 35,000 uh, 17.5. Yes, yes, or a building, yeah. or a dwelling, absolutely, yeah, because you're going to, the day one and the future, if it was a warehouse, you're absolutely right in the money, man. Any question, guys? Any question about that one? So this is my lighting load. This is my lighting load. Let's keep, any question about lighting load for the whole building? Well, they're added together all the way down at the bottom. Yep, they're added together all the way down to the bottom. Added together all the way down to the bottom. Okay. All right. Well, let's um, let's see the ones that I'm gonna I'm gonna make the the cells that I'm gonna add together at the bottom, guys. I just made them in a different cell here because uh, because of another reason. So the ones that we're going to be adding together is actually the square foot for the whole building and the future plus the lighting day one and the lighting future. You know what's a better way of doing it? Maybe using making it red. Okay, here you go. Making these are the ones I'm making red right now. Well, I can't making red the other one. I have to use a different color probably. I don't know if blue will make it even difference. Anyway. So these are the ones that, that you will be adding. These to be the red 29, 5, 35, and 17K. Questions? No derating for the lights. No derating for the lights. Track lights. Now, let's go to two, uh, 220.43B. 
and see it says for track lights 150 volt amp for every two feet can you guys go to 220.43b let's go to 220.43b 220.43 and b there you go if you guys go to this is where this track light and show window light let's look at the track light if you have a track light in your building you don't have to if you have a track light you're going to assign 100 volt 40, 150 volt amp for every two feet so uh, if i have 100 feet of them divide by 250 multiply by 150. cool if you have a track light if you have a show window show window for show windows right underneath it the same thing guys show window the load of um, shall not be less than a, a 664 or we don't do meters so we're going to do um right in here for linear foot if it's a show window you're going to have a 200 volt amp for every linear foot you have a window and you're showing your products like manufacturing you have all these lights you measure them linearly and you multiply them by 200. these are lighting loads also lighting loads right because you have lights show windows and track lights are lighting loads you can have a track light in a window and it becomes a show window right to show the products, as long as you use it to show products, the show window. Okay, any question about these two guys? These are two different, these now we're getting into the specific lights. The building that we have, if we have a show window, we're going to add it. If we don't have a show window, what do you do? Put big fat zero. I'm not aware of a show window in our building <clears throat> that we have, or a track light. Cool? Okay, so we have the show window and the track light. In this case, now remember the example that I have, guys, is not our building. So I have 10 show window and track um, in this uh, track lights in this case, and the show window right underneath it here. We highlighted both of them, right? And for um, I have 30 feet for the track lights, and uh, um, I picked the 30 feet, 150 volt amp. So look at the math, guys. Oops, where am I here? Look at the math that we did here. So what we did, as you know, Chris, is we took the square feet, we took the, um, the track light, multiplied by 150, divided by 0.5, or multiplied by 0.5. That's because every two feet. Everybody knows how to do every two feet, so you multiply them, then you divide them by two. Cool? I've got the PDF file. Do you have the Excel file available for you to see the calculations? Yes, I usually don't give you the Excel sheet though. Okay, but but it's the the the, the code is very clear, guys. It says you take the linear feet, you multiply it, multiply uh, 150 by how many linear feet you have, um, and divide it by two. Any question, guys, about this? Any question about this? So this is specific light. Okay, so this is my total for this step. Uh, if I go to the show window, guys, show window, the same thing. I have 10 feet of show window and multiply them by 200 straight, and that will give me, that will give me 100, um, that will give me the, the 2,000. Show window, 200, multiplied by the number of feet. The whole idea of this exercise, guys, is to get you to go use the code and find where all these information from the code. Multiplication, you can do in a piece of paper in the back of your truck. Now, if you use an Excel sheet, it's, of course, a bonus because you can do all this calculation with Excel. Very simple math. Okay. Any question, guys, about this? Any question? So I have my show window, my total of my show window. Let me use a, okay. And I have um, um, the total of um, show window. Okay, now if I have a sign, the last thing I want to do, guys, is a sign. Let's go to 220.14F. 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 All the way to 220.14. And where's my F? Uh, F right here. 220.14 is here, and 220.14F is here. Can you guys highlight this one, please? Highlight this one. It's page 62. 
signs and outline lights. Signs and outline lights shall be calculated at a minimum of 100, uh, 1200 volt amp for each required branch circuit specified in 600.5A. If you go to 600.5A, Ashley, it tells you a commercial building must have at least one outlet, one circuit for a sign. That says, welcome to Dunwoody College of Technology. Welcome to Hullberg Engineers. So in our building, we're going to have minimum of one for the sign. And you're going to sign a load of how much for this? 1,200 volt amp. 1,200 volt amp. Any question guys about F? Any question about F? OK, so here's my sign. Highlight it. So that's the second, the second thing you need to carry is a sign. And in my case, I have one sign. I multiply the sign by 1,200, um, 1,200, and that will give me 1,200, right? That will give me 1,200. OK. Any question guys about the signs? Now, we are done with all the lights. The, the different type of lights that we have, guys, is we have the general light in the building. And we have signs, <clears throat> and we have track lights and show windows. In your building, Aladib, we're going to have two types of lights. You're going to have the light for the building, interior of the building, and you're going to have a sign. And later on, you guys will have anybody else that we're missing here? What are we missing? How about the parking lot light? We're missing the parking lot light. How would you do a parking lot light? And the security light on the, the perimeter of the building, how do you do that? You're going to take them by volt amps. You're going to add a step for parking lot light and security lights as a volt amp. Find the volt amp when you guys design them. You find the volt amp for all of them, add them up, and that will be the load for the security light, for the perimeter lights, as well as the parking lights. Okay. Any question guys up to this point? Any question? So now, continuous load. Um, Chris, believe it or not, my friend, continuous load, all the lights are considered continuous load. All the lights are con considered continuous load. So what we did is we added all my lights. I don't know if you guys can see here in this step. We added all the lights in this step. I-25, 40, 44, 48, 30. All these lights are added together and multiplied by 125. Multiplied by 125. Can you guys see that? We took the 35, the 17 and a half, the 20.2, the 1.2, the 2, and I'm talking KVA here, and we added them all up in this step, 75. Then, then Nick, my friend, we multiply them by 1.25. Why 1.25? Because they're continuous load. Why 1.25? Because they're continuous load. And off it goes with the total load for my, uh, the total load for lighting load. The total for my lighting load. Any question guys about this? Any question about the lighting load? Okay. Now what I'm, what I'm not, what I'm showing you guys here, this calculation is for the whole service. This calculation is for the whole service. But um, tell my friend, it seems I'm losing a lot of friends today. <laughs> Um, what what else do you can use? What else can you use the seventy two, the seventy two hundred? What else can you guys use the seventy two, uh, seventy two kVA? This is light. Based on the criteria that we have in our project, guys, we want all the lights to be fit from a separate panel. So, do you think this would be a number that I'm going to be using to size my lighting panel? Yes, you're going to be using this number to size your lighting panel. So this is very, very important because that number is going to be the number that you're going to be using to size your lighting panel. To size your lighting panel. And that's why we have the LP here. This is my lighting panel. This is my lighting panel. If you go up, receptacle panel. Chris, if you look at the top, right here, these are the ones I'm going to do to, to size my receptacle panel. I need a receptacle panel. These are numbers that you're going to be adding to size your receptacle panel. 
So as we add all these loads, guys, you can achieve two things. Number one, you can size a service, which is the, must, the most important thing is find the size of the service. The second thing, by itemizing them like this, you can pull certain loads to size the panels. And we're going to do that one in a second. Pull certain loads to size the receptacle panel. I'm going to give you a break. And lighting panel, the receptacle panel and lighting panel. OK. Um, so we have the lighting panel, the receptacle panel. Um, OK, let me go close that one so we can get rid of that mess. Any question, guys, up to this point? Any question about the receptacle panel and the lighting panel? Receptacle loads and lighting loads. Any question? When you deal with a commercial building, you're dealing with three major types of loads. Receptacles, done. Lighting, done. What's the next one? Equipment. Take five minutes and we'll jump into equipment. Okay. Every time you get into any building, there are three types of loads that you encounter. Every building that you encounter, when you get into a building, there are three chunks of load that you mainly encounter in that building. Chunk number one is receptacle load. Chunk number two is lighting load. And chunk number three is equipment load. So these are, if you enter any commercial building, guys, that's what you're going to be finding. Really, yes. You have a chunk of load that's for light, chunk of load for receptacles, and the other is for mechanical equipment. Mechanical, when I say equipment here, I mean mechanical equipment. So Chris, my friend, you agree with me that we did the receptacle load now, right? We analyzed it. We did the lighting load. Now what do you think we're going to go analyze what next? Mechanical load, that's the heating, ventilation, air conditioning of the building. The equipment needs to be fed. So every type of building. Now as, you, as we move in a bigger building like hospital, they keep adding chunks of loads. I don't know if it means anything to you guys, but when I say a chunk of load, I mean for the most part a panel. So from the lighting load, what do you think the lighting load is going to be split into what? One panel or multiple panels, and we call them lighting panel. So we're going to go later on and size only from the lighting load. We're going to dump them into a panel and call it the lighting panel. From the receptacle load, what do you think the receptacle load is going to go be fit from what? For the most part. From a panel that's called receptacle panel. So I have lighting panel and receptacle panel. The mechanical load, where do you guys think the mechanical load should be, would be fit from? Something called somehow mechanical Mechanical panel, mechanical panel. So these are and and uh, all the things is blue and and then you have a service service panel and from the service panel you come and you feed the receptacle panel and from the service panel you come and you feed the the lighting panel and the receptacle panel and from the service panel you come and you feed the mechanical panel. Does that make sense? That's typical, almost typical in any big building. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Good point. In the service panel, you have one main breaker for the receptacle panel, one main breaker for the mechanical panel, and one main breaker for the lighting panel. And of course, the main for the whole panel. Do you have a breaker for the service Yes. Yes. Yes, you have to. Massive yeah, massive big breaker. The project that we have, I want to remind you guys, our project now, the project that we have is made out of the following. I have my panel, I want to call it for a better term, a service, my service panel here. And you can name it anything, panel one or two. From the service panel, I'm asking you guys to have receptacle panel. And also from the service panel, I'm asking you to have lighting panel. And also from the service panel, I'm asking you guys to have UPS panel. Okay? That's what we're asking. That's the project that you guys are going to do for me, for us. Cool? The calculation that I'm doing right now, Rob, is you're going to do three cal four calculations for me. 
You're going to do calculation number one for the main panel, calculation number two for the receptacle panel, calculation number three for the lighting panel, calculation number four for the UPS panel. Don't ask me about the UPS panel yet. These are, we'll do it as we go. It's just going to be a tiny little panel to feed the UPS for the commercial build, for the, the building that we have. What, what I'm working on right now, everybody knows that what I'm working on right now is actually calculation number one for the main. From the main, I'm going to suck data to find two and three. Am I, everybody see the big picture? No mechanical panel. No, yeah. Where's the mechanical panel, Chad? And because this is a small building, we decided, we, the engineers here, decided not to put the mechanical panel here. So, to help you understand, we decided not to because smaller building. Oh, by the way, can you grab all these three panel loads and put them in one and have only one panel in the building? Yep, that's a small building. You have one panel, like your house and mine. You have only one panel for the most part. The more bigger system you get into, the more the load starts blitting by function, by type of load, lighting, receptacle, UPS, and, and I... I'm going to, I can add the mechanical panel here, mechanical panel, but I want to tell you guys we're not using it in this project. We're not using this panel. We're not using this panel in this project. Because the project, why? Because the project is small. Cool? So mechanical panel, ignore it. Okay, so everybody knows what the whole sheet is doing. It's sizing the main panel, and in a second I'm going to be pulling data to size the receptacle panel, and the lighting panel, I want to warn you, number four, the UPS panel will size it slightly different, so you hold your horses in there. Where will the heat be panel? Good point. Um, I want you to help. Uh, when we, if you guys go to page 11 in the sheet that I gave you, the package, it tells you what's fed from what. What's fed from what? Page 11 circled. Page 11 circled. So if you guys go there while I... Uh, but if, my point here is, everybody see the big picture now? We're doing one, we're going to do a two or three calculation. So let's go back to up my sheet. While you guys are grabbing the sheet, the project sheet, page 11, if you look at the electrical service, from the main distribution panel, we're going to have a lighting panel, a receptacle panel, a UPS panel, and at the same thing, um, item 1.10D, D, 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 you're going to have air handling unit from the main, the cooling unit, the boiler, pump, boiler 2, uh, auto transfer switch for the generator, and provide distribution to feed future lighting, and also future circuits for the future uh, panels. Can you guys see that? Everybody, I'm reading from page 11, circle, the bottom, 1.10 electrical service. That will help you. Be, with, without this, Jackson, I have no idea what's going to be fit from what. Okay. I know if I see a lighting panel, everybody knows what, what's going to be fit from lighting panel. Of course lights, yeah. Receptacle panel. Of course receptacles, right? Uh, main panel. The main panel, only the main panel, they want you to feed the stuff that they're listing here from the main panel. So all the other mechanical, little mechanical stuff, where are you going to be feeding it from? We're going to be feeding it from the receptacle panel. Okay, so let's go continue with our, we did the light, guys. Uh, kitchen equipment. If you have kitchen equipment, guys, you're going to use, we don't have, in this case, we have, uh, we decided to put a dishwasher and we multiply it by 20 amp for it and we use the face value uh, to give us 2400. Just a dishwasher in this building. That's my only mechanical equipment. I want to take you guys to 220.56, though. Um, very important, 220.56, if you have mechanical equipment. 220.56 says you have to do some derating. Um, so let's go to 220.56 if you guys don't mind. 220.56. We're almost there. 56, right here. This is if you have uh, mostly, this is for mostly probably hot, um, um, Restaurants and so forth, guys. You can apply, you can apply a demand factor. It shall be permissible to calculate the load for a commercial electric cooking equipment, dishwasher, um, garbage uh, booster, heater, water heater. All these, 
um, and other kitchen equipment based on table 220.56 in a commercial building. And if you guys go to 220.56, so it will tell you when you multiply them, if you go all the way to this table right in here. So Chris, if you guys highlight 220.56, demand factor for kitchen equipment, it will tell you if you have, I'm going to highlight the last one. If you have six or over, add them up volt amp and cut them by 65%. It allows you guys for kitchen equipment to derate them because it's highly unlikely they're going to be uh, on at the same time. And I want to remind you all of the people, we are talking about kitchen equipment in non-dwelling. Okay? Does that make sense? So please highlight 220.56. If I have three equipment, I cut it by, add them up, cut them by 90%. Up to two equipment, leave them alone. Don't mess with them. Do you guys see 220.55? We don't touch that one. That's residential. We, we, uh, approach that baby long time ago. So what I want to highlight, if you have electric, this is basically what I want to highlight. Uh, cooking equipment, dishwasher, water heater, booster heater, uh, and other kitchen equipment, add them up, multiply them by the demand factor 220.56. They tell you also this does not apply to the air conditioning here, the, work, the air conditioning or the heating inside the, don't apply this to the heat and air conditioning inside the kitchen. Does not apply to it. And there's one restriction here. I always use it for the master when I teach master exam prep. I say, um, shall the feeder or the service shall not be less than the sum of the largest two kitchen equipment loads. They use this one for, because they're not masters. But if you're a master electrician, they catch you on that one. Whatever you do, when you derate, they don't want to his, derate his number. The bottom one, it says, if you add the largest two pieces of equipment in your kitchen, face value, add him up the number is here when you derate the number is here you have to stick with the with the, the largest two equipments in your kitchen we're, we're not there because we're not doing kitchen equipment like in, in this example but this becomes very handy any question is about 2056 very important article uh, section okay so if you're there this is what 10 is uh, I mean um, 11. So if you guys go, I'm going to go highlight 11. I have only dishwasher in the building, so leave it alone. Now we will go to 12. 12 is non-coincidental loads. You guys remember how if things are not highly unlikely that they're going to run at the same time, then you have to, what did we say? You can choose the largest non-coincidental load. For non-coincidental load, Chris, from the all this information that you see right here in front of you guys, this is coming from the project. I want to warn you that we changed the project in the past. Now, what you see right now here is based on 480. Now, your system is 208. It's going to be kind of identical, the layout, but the numbers are different. Take this. I have two heaters. Each one of them is 3.5 amps. Um, and I have um, another two heaters. Each one of them is 1.5. All of them are running, burning at 120, single phase. So my math, look at this, my math. My math is basically taking this, multiplied by this, multiplied by the amp. The voltage times the amp times the number. Okay, that's a piece of cake, Chad. Any question, guys? And where do the heaters came from? The heaters are in the building by design. Okay, so this is the first uh, load. So I have my total heat. Can you guys see the total heat here for all the two heaters that I have in my building? Condensing unit. I have one condensing unit, uh, Chris, and it's burning. That baby is burning at 10.4. Uh, it's a three phase, and it's running at 480. So I need to find to find the to find the volt amp for it. You multiply the unit by the amps, full load amps, by the three phase component, 1.73, by the voltage 480, and that will give you the number volt amp here. I have also um, a future condensing unit. A future condensing unit, the same thing. This is the amps for it. I have an air handling unit and a file server. An air handling unit and a file server. Um, okay. And an air handling unit and a file server. Um, and then what I do, so I have all these equipment. Then I have to choose the largest of heat or cool. Can you guys, if you guys are with me, the, here's my heat. Can you guys see the heat is uh, 1,200? 
the cooling, the cooling is a lot. The cooling is 33K, by far the cooling is more, and 17K. So what I did here, I picked up the, um, the total cooling equipment here, and this one was the largest of heat or cool. So if you can see that one right in here, so this this number is adding all the cooling equipment plus the air handling unit lump summed with them. This number, the yellow, is actually taking the largest of the cooling, the total heat or the cool, the largest of the two, and dumping them at the bottom here. So long story short, you take your cool and your heat, compare them to with each other, and you choose the largest. Obviously, by far, the heat is uh, the cool is the largest. I know we lumped some guys the air conditioning with it, uh, the air handling unit with it, and the file server, which is sometimes it's not really part of the general cooling system. But even though with this, the cooling is the largest. So, any question, guys, about finding your heating for the building and your cooling and choosing the largest? Heating, cooling, choosing the largest. Can you highlight the sum by column J for the neutral calculation? Here? So, uh, blue, roll 68. This one? Yeah. Let's talk about the neutral in a second, can we? The neutral, I don't want to miss the neutral yet. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, you, you just want to look at the function. Okay, so we got the 72, uh, 71K. That's the, the, the largest of cool and heat. Okay, so where would we go to find the cool and heat, guys? The cool and heat uh, simultaneous is 220.60. And I'm just quick, I'm going to highlight it and come back right away. 220.60 right here. If you guys it will tell you a non coincidental load, if two loads are highly unlikely they're going to run simultaneously, what do you do with them? You choose the largest. You choose the largest. Okay? So we walked you guys through all these um, articles. Um, optional, prohibited. Okay, so we got that one. The largest electric could, we don't want the small appliances. Okay. Okay, so that's where we got the, the, the largest of the heat and cool. The largest of the heat and cool. Any question as about largest in heat and cool? Now, where did we get the air handling unit? The sizing for air handling unit and all this stuff? That's you get it from Article 440. Article 440 and Article 430. This is where it tells you to take the full load amp and you multiply by the voltage. If it's three phase, don't forget the component for the three phase. Any question guys about finding? So really, in reality here, you are, we're not showing is for article 430 and also article 440 because that's also where these equipment are coming from, their motors, article 440 and article 430. Any question guys about the step, step 12 and the total for step 12? Let's go to step uh, 13. Step 13, my friends, is actually motor loads. These are motor loads. And I want to highlight in motor loads, guys, you're going to take uh, go to Article 440 and 430. A bunch of articles will give you there. 220.14a. I think it handles them. Let's go look at 220.14a. 220.14a. 220. Okay, go up, 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 Chad. 220. All right, so go. 220.14a specific loads. If you guys look at specific loads, um, it says any outlet for specific appliances, blah, 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 shall be based on this 220.14a. And, um, and it refers you. 220 dwelling electric heat 224. There's one one article that refers you to this table here, the calculation. I want you to highlight this table, guys. This is where additional references are. For example, when we did the when we did the motors, can you guys see where the motor feeder is right in here in this table? And when we did the HVAC 440, 
I don't see the 440. You see the 440? Anyway, so this is where you can specific loads. Specific loads will be coming from, like the motors will be article here, 440, right here, the first one. Here's where the AC refer you to the calculation for specific equipment from this table. Okay, the heating and cooling are coming from 440 and 430 directly from here. Very easy. It will tell you, take them, take the largest, multiply by 1.25, all the others, like we did in the residential. Can you please highlight this one, though? Okay. Um, up here? The table, down. Okay, there you go. So that's where the heating and cooling came to be, the motors and the AC equipment. Cool? Move on? No? So that's that's where the, these came from, guys, the articles. Okay, then um, where did these pumps came from? All these p boiler pumps and exhaust fans, these are from the mechanical engineers t giving us the information for the building that we have. That's your building. So we took the full load amp from the NEC, multiplied by the voltage, depending on what voltage, and we came up with uh, with the volt amp. Then, Chris, we took the largest. Look what they did. They, they took a function here and looked at all these motors. What's the largest motor? Volt amp. And multiply that largest motor by 0.25. Because that's what the code says. You take the largest motor, multiply by 1.25, plus all the other motors. So that function here, if you look at this, the math in it, if anybody wants to get the math, the largest of this, all these cells together. Very easy. If you type equal largest brackets and grab all the cells that you want, in this case, these cells, you can see them. It will, the Excel actually will go and look at all these numbers and pick the largest number, as you could. So the largest or max, you can use max too or minimum, you know, these function Excel. And then... You multiply it by 0.25, then you add them up. So here's this one, 7.7K is actually the total for the motor load that I have. Now, the question would be always that I get asked, what's the difference between 12 and 13, Chad? Nothing. The difference between 12 and 13 is really nothing. All of them are motor loads and HVAC loads. The only thing we split them, because these are associated with heating and cooling, and we want to choose the largest of the two. Otherwise, we can put them all in one step, Chris, as long as you identify them as the one that has heat and cool, identify them separately so you can, you can choose the largest. So 12 and 13 are identical steps. The only thing we step, we put them in two steps because we want to look at the largest of that cool. We, we put the first step 12 for only the associated equipment with heating and cooling, so we can choose the largest of the two. What's, how do you handle the issue of continuous versus non-continuous? Particularly the heating is continuous, the AC is continuous. Um, the largest of the two? Well, techni technically, you should have, we should have added, added when we pick them up, if it's a motor, like air handling unit, you, you could add easily for continuous, uh, what the largest load, continuous load, especially if it's a motor, uh, added 25 percent on it. Yeah. No, I did the model the 25 percent only on the motor load. Though the air handling unit is a motor load, really, you technically you probably should drop it. The difference, guys, when it comes a big building, a 25 percent on the largest motor become peanuts, and it doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But I added it here anyway on the point 25. It really becomes a very small amount. Look at the amount that you get here, 707, compared to 7.7. .7. That's a bit, tiny little piece. But that's 25% that's of the largest motor if you have 100 motors. The largest motor. Right. If you have 100 of them, the largest motor, 25% of it becomes... No, you're right. But if, if all 100 of these motors are running continuously, you have to account for that. No, only for the largest. Yep, good point. Only for the largest. They are running continuously, but you account for the largest. Okay, so we add up the load, guys, and then um, then you add um, other loads. If there's any other loads in your building, you add them here. We don't have any other loads like it, like data centers and so forth. We'll talk about this. Sets. And then we total them. 
This is my total. I'm going to show you guys what we added. If you can, you guys, if you just be with me, I took the. Do you guys remember the receptacles for the building, and the receptacle for the future? I'm picking them up. Can you guys see that? These two. You might have to highlight this one. The receptacle load. Then I went down, 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 all the way to my. This is my lighting load. All my lighting loads multiplied by 1.25. Picked them up on the service, and then I went down to the dishwasher. Picked the, picked the dishwasher up. Picked the largest of the cooling and heating up. Can you guys see that? And then I went down and picked the all the motors, including 25% of the largest boy or girl. Uh, any other loads, which is nothing here. And then add them all up. So basically added all the loads up that's going to be fit from the main building. That's the load that's going to be fed from this. From This is the calculation for a service panel. That's a load that's going to be fed from a service panel. Are you guys with me? Service panel. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to lie to you, Chris, my friend. Then I picked it up here and I divided it by 1.73 and 480. By the way, your service is 208. So your number is going to be completely different. Your service is 208. So if you look at this number here, how this number came to be, oops, how this number came to be, we took the total volt amp divided by square root of 3 and 480, end up with uh, 220. Six, 226. Now I don't know about you. 226 is not a standard panel size. The panel, the panel size is the size of the overcam protection device ahead of it. I can't buy 225, 226. There's your option. Either you go by code, you have to go up to the next standard. Now, but look at that, guys. The next standard up is 250. I could have gone to 225. Is a standard amp panel. Where would you find these standards? 220. Um, 240.6 from 240.6 so from 240.6 i went up as i should safety went up now nick because we're going becoming too green now that's where become value engineering go down down less equipment down could be cheaper more green less copper and all this good stuff so the size of my service is 250. size of my service 250. any question guys about size of the service 250 size of my service is 250. now i'm going to go to uh, 240.6 i will like to one time highlight this one i know we highlighted before but i want to highlight 240 because it's one of the most important table in i believe and if you don't agree with me chris don't say that um 240. if you guys go 240.4 where did they go here if you have not highlighted 240.4, please do so. This is uh, 240.6. This is where you, you're going to find all the fixed circuit breaker and fuses sizes. You start from 15 and you end up all the way to 6,000. The most common one, that, the high, largest that I've seen is 4,000. Um, they also give you one fuses, 1, 3, 6, and 10, but we don't use them. So you're 15 all the way to 600, uh, 6,000. Now, if you are, look look at that, between 200 and 225, there is no size. So if you are more than 200, you're going to go all the way to 225. Everybody knows how to use this? I know everybody knows how to use this because we use it. But here's one that you have to be aware of this, guys, is B. I don't know how many of you have used B. B is we're going to using it using it next quarter. If you have an adjustable circuit breaker, if you have an adjustable circuit breaker, then the sizes are unlimited because I can tweak that circuit breaker, not unlimited, but there, you can't um, quantify the sizes. There's a lot of sizes. So I want you to highlight this one for me later on and highlight that tiny little one here. When you have an adjustable circuit breaker, you start sizing based on a long time pickup sitting. You can tweak that circuit breaker wherever you tweak it, for example, I have a 1,000 amp circuit breaker, and I'm set that 1,000 amp circuit breaker at 0.9. The pickup is 1,000. The sitting, the pickup sitting is 0.9. So 0.9 times 1,000 give me 900. Do I have a 900 circuit breaker, by the way? Look at this. Do, from here to here, do I have a 900 circuit breaker? Look at this. Do I have a 900? No. But if I have an adjustable circuit breaker, do I have a 900 circuit breaker? Yes. It becomes a big deal, guys, when we go for systems higher than 600 amp. 
it becomes a big deal. You, you start using adjustable circuit breakers and you size based on long time pickup. Anyway, so highlight this one for me, please. Um, and it, it will tell you, you have to put them on the restricted, restricted access adjustable trip. Um, you can size if you put them, yeah, well, we'll get into that one when we go to the commercial, uh, to the industrial. Okay, so that's where we got the 250. Any question as where we got the 250 here? Now, Jackson, my friend, we have just sized the panel. I'm going to go call uh, Viking Electric or Cutler Hammer Square D and buy 250 panel. And what size, in this case, what's the voltage for 8277? For in this case, your case is going to be what? 28120, right? Everybody knows yours is going to be 28120. This example is for 8277. Okay. The next thing, guys, we're going to go size the conductors. This is a quick exercise of sizing conductors. Um, we're going to go to 210. This is, of course, change 210.15 B16. 210.15 now B16. Um, and so this also. We're going to go to 210.15 B16. I'm going to delete that one because of the new change in the code. Uh, I'm sorry, 310.15 B16. Okay. Uh, 310.15 B1. We're going to be sizing these and based on 240.4 C and all this good stuff. So, um, Aladipo, I have 250. Let me run you very quick, just a quick reminder how to use the table 310.16, guys. So let's go directly into 310.16 and size ourselves. Just like I know you've done it and I know you guys are expert. Um, um, let's go quick all the way to 310.16 and size that baby and off it goes. Here you go. So I need um, 250. You guys remember the rules of using this table? Am I higher than 100 uh, AM, Chris? Yep. So which column am I going to go to? 75. Thank you. So I'm going to go to 75. Why 75? Because I'm higher than um, 75 because I'm higher than 100. Okay, so I'm going to go 75 and I'm going to go 250. 250, here's 230s. Two th is 230 what? Well, I'm looking for 250. Oops. Um, edit. I'm looking for 250. Here's my 250. Everybody can see that? Here's my 250. So. Uh, if I can get it to stick, here you go, 250. Now then, 225 is good, right? 250, then what size do I need? 250, so 250, cool? Everybody knows how to use this table? So what's my size, 250? What's the insulation? We're going, bringing the service most likely underground. So what's the insulation I'm gonna be using? Here's the insulation, THHW is a very beautiful insulation. THHW, 250, cool? Everybody's with me? Okay, so we size the table. Okay, THHW250. How many conductors and why? Everybody knows, guys, why? Can you see what it says? One set of three conductors. Why one set? Because we can parallel in the future when we get bigger. One set of three conductors. What are these three conductors? The three phases. Phase A, phase B, and phase C. We're talking about three phases here. What happened to the neutral? The neutral, we're going to do it. We're going to talk about the neutral next. Any question, guys, about the three sets of 250? How we size the three sets of 250 for this building? Any question? Okay, so that's then. I'm going to continue, guys, with the um, size, the, um, the neutral conductor. We'll talk in the neutral conductor in a second. I want to size the grounding electrode conductor. Can you guys see that grounding electrode conductor? I'm going to do, I'm going to do this step first here and we size this step first right uh, we size this and we're going to size this we'll come to the neutral next so Ashley grounding electrode conductor that's the one you're going to tie directly to the ground steel you're going to go to 250.66 okay let's go to 250.66 one second here here's a 250 so I'm going to size it based on the size of the conductor now Nick what's the size of the conductor 250 KCM right Remember, remember the 250 KCM, and let's go size it. 250 KCM all the way, and you see, grab this one, go to 250. Here's my 250, grounding and bonding. 250. That what did we say? 250.66 all the way. Uh, I guess if I put 250.66, it might jump to it, but you might. There you go. 
So Ashley, my friend, Nick, here you go. Here's 250.66. If you haven't highlighted this, please do so. Okay. So uh, Nick, my friend, my size was 250. So the 250 is between 3 art, right? Between 3 art and 350, right? Everybody knows that's between 3 art and 350. And because Chad is vested in the copper companies and I hate the aluminum, so we're going to be using copper. And what size grounding electrode conductor do we need? Number two. Gentlemen, this is what expected from you when you graduate. The, the service all the way, size the grounding electrode conductor. The three phases, I'm going to go to the neutral and we'll be done. Any question, guys? Conduit. We know how to size the conduit now when we size the neutral. And then we're done. We size the phases, THHW 250, the grounding electrode conductor cover uninsulated. We're using number two or insulated if you want it. Okay. Can I move out of here? Yes, sir. Why did they go to that column? Didn't you hear me that I invested in the copper company? I like copper because I want to use copper. Now, the question would be a very good point. Can I use the second column here? If you want to use aluminum or copper clad aluminum, um, then you can use one out. The, the, uh, okay, all of the people, your default is copper unless they tell you otherwise. Always sizing copper. I know that some contractors don't like that one because it's cheaper. The aluminum is cheaper and lighter, but Okay, you could so you can use copper or aluminum. Look at the sizes are different. Okay, now any question guys about sizing for the service? We sized all the way to our service. Now I'm going to go to the neutral. I'm going to go to size the neutral. Now before I size the neutral, let me tell you one little secret here. If your if your panel if your panel is 200 amp or higher. If, if your panel is higher than 200, well, let's, let me space it this. If your panel is too, higher than 250, 250 or less, it's a good idea to pull a full neutral. Full neutral. If it's higher than 250, then you start derating. But in this case, but you can derate at any time. In this case, we have to derate. I decided to derate just for the exercise of it. We'll get into this one. Okay, let's go to the neutral. The second column, guys, are in neutral. To Ashley, do you agree with me that all the receptacles will be seen as, they will be seen at some some point as a neutral load, right? They need a neutral. So I put them in here. All the receptacles. Everybody knows why I put these. By the way, this is a neutral. Why these are in the neutral column. They're pulled into the neutral because they're neutral load. They need neutral. Okay, move on, Chad. We know that. All the way up to here. Do you agree with me, guys? This is all light, 7,200. Do you agree with me that 72,000, the 72K, all the lights are neutral loads, <coughs> right? All the lights are running at 277 or 120. They are neutral loads. Are you with me? They're going to be seen by the neutral. Good. There's my neutral. How about the, the dishwasher? Of course, Chad, it's going to be pulled here. Then here's where a little monkeying with the equipment here, the heating. Look what, guys, the 840 and the 430, anything that 120, um, you pull it as a neutral. Can you guys see that? So we pulled this one and here, and we pulled the largest of the two here. This one is the largest of these two. Um, I mean the sum, the sum of these two, not the largest, sum of these two. And then any anybody can tell me why didn't I put any of these 480 as a neutral load? They're not seen by the neutral. Are you kidding me, Chad? Okay, so they're not neutral. And then here, this one is basically the largest. There's one load here. I think where is this one came AC. from? The AC. The AC for the file server. Is that what we're picking it up from? Uh, yep, the AC for the file server. It's running at 208. Uh, is it 208, 120, or just 208? Okay, so we pulled that one, and they pulled the largest of the two. And then we added them, this one, the maximum of the two, the maximum of the heat or the cool. And that's the step that I carried. This is the gray, or whatever color is this, is the step that I carried for this. So anything, anything that doesn't have a neutral, you're going to drop it. Look at the, t the bottom one. The bottom one, anything that has a neutral, guys, we grabbed it over here. We added them up. Right? Here's what they add them up. 
and we added 25% to the largest, and then we totaled them. Exactly what we did, except now we're only using the single phase. And here's my total here. And then the last one is adding all these neutral loads, all these neutral loads, and dividing the neutral load by, look what I'm dividing it. I divide it by 481.73 because that's my system. You guys are going to be dividing by what? 208, 208. And I came up with, um, with uh, 137, okay? Then I'm going to go size for 137. What's the size that I can, I can use for 137? Let's go to the code, see if we size it. So here's my neutral load. I'm going to go directly to this uh, code and go size for 137. Okay, 137, let's see if we did it right here, 137, close that one, 137 under 75, right, 137, I need one out, are you with me guys, you see that one out, one out, oops, so, oops, go back, there you go, oops, go back again buddy, doesn't want to go back, so one, um, 37 and will give me one knot. Any question as we came up with one knot? So we we'll go back and then what size neutral do I need? One knot. Now, there's one little problem actually. The code says your neutral conductor cannot be less than the mean system bonding jumper. The mean system bonding jumper. That's very important. Your neutral conductor cannot be less than the mean bonding jumper. Okay, so that's also in the rule that you guys have it here. If you look at this, it says, if you read this one, it says the neutral conductor, and right, right in here, says the neutral conductor shall not be less than the main bonding jumper. The main bonding jumper, guys, in my case, is number one, because the main bonding jumper and the grounding electroconductor are identical until you start hitting 1100 kcm. Up to 1100 kcm, they're identical. Did we come up with two here? Two or, uh, here, I'm sorry, right here. It is two. So we came up with two. And now, is the one not less than two? If it was less than two, you have to put two. It's not less than two, it's bigger than two, then we're good to go. That's why the one not is here. So now, you have a conduit, a PVC, we didn't size the PVC conduit, but right here, guys, you're going to go for me and size the PVC conduit. I have a conduit that has the following conductors. It's going to have... Um, uh, three, uh, four conductors, three conductors, 250 kcm, THHW, and one conductor, uh, one knot, THHW, and you're going to size a PVC, a PVC schedule 80, commercial schedule 80, and underground and size the conduit. Anybody does not know how to size a conduit, if you need four conductors, different sizes, right? Chapter 9, table 5 and 4. Any question you guys about this? Any question? The last thing I want to do is I'm going to size the receptacle panel and the lighting panel and let you go. The receptacle panel and the lighting panel. I want to size the receptacle panel and lighting, which is, it's everything is there. Cool? Any question about sizing the neutral? Sizing the neutral? Here's what I wear, if I wear you guys, if you listen to your friend Chad. Now I'm going to call, this is, I'm going to call a service panel here for the lack of better name. I'm gonna call this is receptacle panel, and I'm gonna call this is neutral for it. I'm gonna call uh, receptacle panel dash neutral. And this one, I'm gonna call it lighting panel. And right next to it, I'm gonna call this one uh, lighting panel dash neutral, because I need a neutral calculation for lighting panel, okay? All right, so I trust, I want to go do the receptacle panel. If you guys, are, I'm sorry, you have a question? Okay, one more time, right in here. This here? Okay, so 137. You know where we went, we found the one out, right? Yep. One out. Now here's my one out. Then you're not done. You have to take the one out and look at the grounding electrode conductor, which is equivalent to the main bonding jumper. If the one-aught is less than two, then you have to use two. 
If the one not or if the neutral is more than two in my example, then you have to use the neutral. So you choose the largest of the system bonding jumper or the neutral calculation that you did. I promise you, uh, Dustin, my friend, we have a ground, we have a, I have a really good sheet that we do about grounding and bonding. We go through all this calculation too one more time. But for the time being, when you calculate your neutral, always go check based on the main bonding jumper, which is from 250.66. Make sure you compare it. You don't get less than what 250.66 tells you with modification for main bonding jumper. Any question as about this? Okay, shall we do the receptacle panel together? All right, let's go here. And um, you, we might have to be... Okay, now, do you agree with me, guys, that this one, uh, the receptacle panel is going to be carrying this load? No problem, Chad. How about this load? Do you think it's going to be in the receptacle panel? You'd hope so. These are receptacles. Okay, let's go there. How about the, here? Do you guys think it's this receptacle? Um, I'm going to go delete this lighting here. Do you guys think this one here, these are all lights. Do you think it's going to be on the receptacle panel here? The lights? No. It's going to be lighting panel. How about the, how about the dishwasher? Where would you think the dishwasher is going to go? Lighting or receptacle? Receptacle, so drag it and drop it into receptacle. See how easy that is, guys? Um, okay, now this is where we're going to be splitting here. Um, now you're going to ask yourself, what else is going to be on the receptacle panel out of these systems? Um, in my case, the only thing that cannot be, uh, if you have a boiler uh, bump, one, pump one and pump two, boiler pump one and two, and condensing unit, air handling unit. Based on this sheet, guys, the only thing that cannot be on the receptacle panel is the air handling unit, the condensing unit, the boiler pump, and the boiler uh, pump one and two. These have to go in the main. Everything else will be on the receptacle panel. Where else would you go? Lighting panel? I don't have a mechanical panel. If I have a mechanical panel here, all this will go in the mechanical panel. Okay, so let's go. So these, um, these two, I'm going to go copy them and dump them right in here, okay? All right, so these are my receptacle panel. Um, and actually, this is the, the comment for them. This is already added together. So here's my receptacle panel. Uh, yeah. Look at the numbers you just got. Oh, they're, oh, they're, um, yeah, they're not. It kept the relationship. It kept the relationship. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. This equal this. Um, yep, yeah, oops, this equal this. I forgot that we have the math here. Okay, so we're gonna then I drag these, I get the math in them. Okay, perfect. So I just copying them. When you copy guys in math, you gotta be careful what Chris exactly what Chris did. You say equal, so you can maintain the relationship between them. We're not gonna sum it, it's already summed, okay. it's carrying it, some door here. Now, these guys, I want to ignore them, guys. The file server, I want to carry the file server, though. I want to take equal, the file server, and uh, what else here? Okay, let's go to all these are uh, fans. All these fans, can you guys see the fans here? All these fans, I want to carry them. So up to this point, I want to say equal, this point, yep, and then drag it down so it carries these all the way to... I might, okay, to here. This is where you start monkeying around with them. Um, but then, obviously, this is going to be wrong because this will be some. You need to drag these two. Oops. Some, open brackets, and add these. Close it. Yeah. This is the sum of these, only the one that has 120. Did I miss any? I missed one more here. So I go equal this. And so I added, okay, I need to expand. So here's my sum, guys. I took the 120 loads only because they have a neutral on them. And I put them into the receptacle panel. Now you're going to add the 25% on these. Um, you can add a 25% on the largest of these motors. Two, um, for example, you can, um, uh, how am I going to do that one? I'm going to say 
equal um, max open brackets of the max of all these close the brackets enter so I'm, I'm having the max of all these f first and then I'm going to multiply it by 0.25 now we're getting into the bitty bitty of that and enter so I took the maximum of all these Did I include the one at the bottom with it? No, I don't want the maximum of the sum, though. The maximum of the top ones. Oh, if I can't get into my... There you go. Hi right here. I took the maximum, guys, of... Look at this. I took the maximum of these four loads and multiply at 25% on it. And then I made this one equal this plus this. That's what you guys are going to be doing to size. So that's my step that I'm going to be carrying here. I added 25%. That makes sense? Yep, almost. 20. I added all the 120 plus 25% on the 120. Okay, the last step here, equal. You, you, if, if you're familiar with math, with Excel, equal this cell. I'm going to carry this cell. I'm, use, I'm doing the receptacle panel. Um, why did they carry anything? I'm doing the receptacle panel here. I'm noticing a, a figure of the neutral that you have on the receptacle panel, not the. Uh... They're identical though here. Okay, well, we have 707 and then 105 for the neutral. 707 include the top though. Oh, okay. We're not carrying the top. Right. Not carrying the top. Okay, I'm adding all the neutral loads, guys. What is this here? I'm going to carry this one too. Right, yep, and I'm going to carry plus, I'm going to carry this one, the total, plus, keep all the way, what is this coming from? Yep, I'm going to carry this one, plus uh, this one, plus this one, enter. So I added all my receptacle panel loads, 4,200, uh, 42,000. Now my receptacle panel is going to be the um, receptacle panel is going to be what 120 guys right? So I'm going to go. I make a math here. Look what my math is going to equal this cell. I like to open divided. Open my brackets. Uh, two or eight times times what? Times one one point seven three. Close it and enter. Here's the size of my panel. I don't like these, uh, which one of them go this way? Here you go. So my panel, because it's 208 guys, 120, is going to be 117. What's an standard panel based on any C code book? Uh, there's 110 and 125, 125. My next standard panel is 125. I'm going to do only the receptacle. You guys will do the rest of them. I'll show you how to pull the code. 125 and what's the panel size anybody has a let's go size for 125 what's the size from any c code book for 125 right here 125 amp panel 130 one uh, okay so 125 i am looking at uh, number one but the problem with number one number one cannot carry more than a hundred so i'm looking at one out because number one is limited to, up to number one, you have to limit it to a 60 degree column unless you know anything about the log. So I'm, I'm looking at one out here. So, uh, because number one, on second here, one out. Let's go back again. The code says, guys, up to number one, number one or less. It has always, up to number one, you have to take the conductor size based on 60 degree column. So if it's over 100, you I know, but there's another rule that says up to number one. That the... Yes, up to number one, you have to use it 60 degree column. So that will give me number one out. Okay, and then you, for the neutral guys, you're going to be pulling, basically everything here is going to be neutral, 
right? Everything is going to be neutral. So the neutral size, you guys agree with me that everything is going to be neutral? These are receptacle loads. I don't have any three phase on them. So the neutral size in this case is going to be what? Identical. So the same neutral. So here's my neutral. How many of them do I have? I My neutral current is going to be a copy here. And my neutral is going to be right in here. Okay? The last thing I want to size, guys, right here, here, is um, what we call it the equipment grounding conductor. And you're going to size this based on table 250.122. And then I'm done. 250.122. The equipment grounding conductor, not the grounding electrode conductor. The equipment grounding conductor. How do you size the equipment ground conductor? Based on 250.122. What's the overcome protection device of this system that I'm installing here? My system overcome protection device is 120. So let me quick show you where you're going to go. So I have uh, how many conductors? One odd, uh, one conductor, one odd, three conductors, three phase, and a neutral. I need to go size my um, equipment grounding conductor. And unless I'm using, I'm not going to use the word bare here, covered or something. So let's, let's go size that conductor here. I don't know what the... A, uh, AWG. So let's go to 120. And let me quick, guys, go all the way to the NEC code book. Um, and then that will be the end of that. Uh, 250. 250. Um, this is closer to the end here. So let's go from the end. 250.122, we said, right? Here you go. 250.122. Uh, Ashley, if you have not highlighted this table for equipment ground and conductor, please do so. What, what was my size? Uh, 125. So my option is 100 or, or 200. So I have to go to 200. And because Chad is vested in the copper company, what do you do? Number six. So with this panel, if it's not EMT conduit, it's going to be a number six conductor. I have, if it's not an EMT conduit, if it's an EMT conduit, we use a shell to ground it, or rigid, or intermediate. If I'm using uh, other than EMT rigid or intermediate, and uh, I can call number six conductor inside the conduit, covered or insulated, if, um, especially if it's PVC, for example. Any question, guys, about the receptacle panel? Now the lighting panel even easier, guys. The lighting panel easier because there's nothing in the lighting panel other than light. Nothing in the lighting panel other than light. Yes, sir. Um, would you just say an answer for your equipment uh, grounding conductor? The two fifty that you Uh, you could, but it might it might be a, co a coincident that they match. But you shouldn't go to two fifty to sixty six because you are dealing with you are dealing with brand circuits. Remember, we. You, you for calculation one, that service sensor conductor. For calculation number two, it becomes an equipment ground conductor. When you call here, what well, we're calling here, this conductor called equipment grounding conductor. That's where you go to table 250.122. What we're pulling here to the service is grounding electrode conductor. And you go to 250.66. Does that make sense? There are two different things. The same thing that one that I'm going to be pulling with the lighting panel, it's also going to be the same equipment running conductor. I know it's, uh, let me just do the lighting panel. The neutral, guys, in this case, the neutral is going to be identical. Okay? Can I do the lighting panel? Because it's very quick, really, really fast. Jackson, my friend, did I guys put you to sleep? Rob, Nick, <laughs> almost. Huh? Okay. Um, all right. So let's go. Let's go to the receptacle. We we did the receptacle panel. Neutral is going to be the same for lighting panel, guys. For lighting panel, the only thing that's going to be in the lighting panel. I'm going to remind you. This is my column for lighting panel. Is only the lights. Only. Where's my lighting panel? So I have, yep, that's it here. The only thing, which is much easier now. Only thing is lights. Done. 72 KVA um, is going to be my lighting panel. So that's piece of cake. Nothing else is going to be in the lighting. So let's go. And this then this cell here is going to equal this cell. Done. 
See how easy that is? Lighting panel. Ashley, does it make sense? That's total. Now we're going to do the uh, equal, we'll do the math on it. So equal this divided by open brackets. Okay, how? what do you want to burn this light at? I have two voltages here. Now your option. Do you guys want to burn the light at 208, uh, at 120 or 277? It's a commercial building. Do we want this light to be 208, 120 panel, or do we want it to be 480, 277? I'm going to make an executive decision that the panel here is going to be 208, 120, because we're in the 208. So I'm going to divide it by, but you can use either. You can divide it by 208, multiplied by um, 1.73. Close it, enter. Did they do the math right, Chris? Okay. So here's my panel. My panel actually end up with 201. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the zeros here. Can you guys see how to get rid of the zeros here? So here's my um, panel, my lighting panel. Now this is an ex executive, executive decision that you have to make. Should I go to 200 or go to the next standard? I always go to the 200, to the next standard. What's the next standard panel? 225. If you don't know, you're going to go to 256. So this is 2225, 225. Okay, for 225, what's the size panel for two, um, um, 225? And oh, by the way, it's going to be the neutral is going to be the same. Well, with neutral, we can do some derating here, but we're not. Um, so if we go to 310.16, all the way to 310.15, 16, what do you say, 225, up to here. Okay, Aladibo, 225 is giving me what? Uh, it's 230, it'll give me 4 out. Good, great, Two, 4 out. So let's go and, and uh, grab this, copy it, and dump it right in here, and that will give me 4 out. Great, so my lighting panel is 4 out. Let's go to the neutral. Neutral, copy. All of them are going to be neutral, and bring it here. I can use a 4 out if you're... The code says, guys, also, if your amps are higher than 200 amp, you can cut it, cut it anything higher than 2 amp by 0.25, by uh, 70, 70%. We're sitting at 225. Design-wise, if your panel is 225, stick with full neutral. It's a good idea to do full neutral on that one. So I have my full neutral, 4 out, um, because I'm very close to 200. Absolutely. But did you look at the voltage system that the service is coming at? The voltage system is what for the service? 480. There are two voltage systems here. The system, this one is running, this one is 480. Yes, that's why it doesn't, the amps look like, are you kidding me? 225 amp fit from a 250 s yes, because there is there are two different systems. This system is running at 480, and this system here, guys, all of them are running at 208. Makes makes a lot of sense when you put the voltages. Okay, then the last thing I want to size, guys, is a grounding electrode conductor based on the 250, and then I'll let you go eat. Um, based on 225, let's go directly to 225. Um, 225, Ashley, my friend, is right here. I like to go to the bottom because they're closer to the end of the table here. 225, there you go. 225, we were there. Um, I wanted 225 this time, so Aladibo, I have to go to 300 because there's no 225. So what's the size conductor that I need? Oops, what is my size conductor? My size conductor that I need is going to be number four. Number four, so copy this and drag it in here and change this one, Ashley, to what? Number four, done. I gave you a week to do this. You can, if you guys, <laughs> if, when you graduate from me, if you work for me, for any engineering firm, you, this is something they can do in an hour, the whole maximum, the whole sizing, the whole panel for the whole building. Really, the, the, the thing that takes time is typing things if you have to. Any question, guys, about this? Any question? So we pulled full neutral. Now sizing the conduit piece of cake, you create chapter 9, table uh, 4 and 5. 
and we size the conduit for them. Phil and um, Rob, guys, we're good. Everybody knows what you guys are going to be doing. Now, later on, later on, we're going to have a UPS panel here, UPS P here, and I'll uh, walk you through it as we get closer. Huh? You mean to shoot it for the folder? I can. Okay. Continue in a in a PDF format though, okay. so you don't get the math. <laughs> If you have any, the math, guys, is not hard. It really is straightforward if you followed with me. This is what you're expected when you graduate from here. You need to be able to do CAD, Revit, all the softwares, and be able to use Excel professionally to pull information from the code, put it in a sheet like this to justify your design. Justify your design. Any question, guys? Okay. What I'm going to do tomorrow, guys, I'm going to walk you through one more example, one more example, calculation by hand this time. All this stuff that we did by calculator, by Excel, we're not going to do, you're going to do it for the project, but you're going to be tested on the same process by hand. So hopefully we'll stick. We're going to repeat, repeat a different example by hand for one panel though, for the main panel. Before I let you guys go, does everybody know how we pull the information to size the service and the sub panels? Can you guys see the big picture, Chris? Does it make sense? The big picture of the service feeding multiple panels downstream. If you if you decided to use different sheets or tabs, guys, different tabs for uh, for the loads, that's fine with me. Uh, but I, I would rather you having different columns in the same sheet. I think it's better. You don't have to repeat yourself. Okay. That's all I have. Any questions, guys? Anybody has any question? No? All right. 